Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Nicole Gallucci. I'm with CosmoQuest. Uh, I am hosting this week's Learning Space Hangout, where we talk about uh, astronomy and space science and science in general education topics. Um, and with me today, I have uh, Rob Sparks. Hello. <laughs> Wave. <laughs> He's working on his name tag. Uh, we just had a little bit of computer fail, so bear with us as we as we get started. Uh, and then Douglas Arian. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Arian's just perfect. That's Arian. fine. Arian, great. Okay, so we're going to talk about Galileo scope. Uh, but first, while Rob's setting up, um, if any of you are watching the uh, the virtual star party last Sunday night, I talked about a a demo demo that I realized I should do for this hangout. Um, if you've joined us for the virtual star parties on Sunday nights, uh, you have seen gorgeous images of Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, and and they uh, are live views through a telescope, and they tend to do this wiggly wavy thing. And we always talk about well, that is called seeing. That is that is the effect of the atmosphere. And so I wanted to do a quick demonstration, uh, something you could do tabletop wise, um, to to demonstrate how turbulence in the atmosphere affects what you see when you go outside and look at the stars. Uh, and so I'm going to try this by pulling off my webcam and try not to make everybody dizzy. <laughs> um, so the setup here is, can you guys see that? Laser pointer. So I've got a laser pointer. I've got taped to a folder here. And uh, this is a, a long plastic rectangular um, container with water in it. And so I've put some cold water in this side. Uh, you can do this with any, any rectangular container. And this, the laser pointer is representing the starlight. Can you guys see that on the back wall? Doug, Rob, can you see it on I'm your video? Can you guys, can you see the laser spot? There, I got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. We can just, yeah, we can see it sort just of there. Just barely see it. Okay. Uh, so the laser pointer is um, the the laser light is going through the water, and that is. That's better. What's that? That's better. That's sharper now. There you go. Okay. So then that the is. Focus is you. There you go. Now it's perfect. <laughs> And then, so that is going through the water, which is representing the atmosphere. Now, what I haven't figured out how to do with only two hands at the moment, so I'm going to have to <laughs> set the camera down somewhere where you guys can see this. Hang on. Ugh. I'm much better at doing these demos live in person. <laughs> doing them with a webcam is, is a totally different experience. So let's see if I can get this. Um, yeah, tilt it up a little bit more, and then and there you go. Oh, sweet. Okay, so now I'm going to try and do so. The webcam is resting on the plastic container. I'm going to do this without dousing my webcam. So I've got a a pitcher of hot water here. So uh, I can't really see the whole thing. So this hot water, uh, I'm going to add this into onto the cold water, and you're going to see what happens to the spot of the laser pointer as I do that. Oops. Can you guys see that shimmering effect that it's doing over there? That's a pretty good demo of bad scene. Yeah. yeah. That's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so the spot gets larger. Um, ooh, uh, yeah, I don't know how well it's showing up on the webcam, but the spot got larger and chaotic, and that is uh, kind of what, that is, it is just what we're, it, just like what we're seeing when we look through the atmosphere with our telescopes. Um, let me turn this camera back around. So that is uh, our little demonstration for the week on uh, a simple astronomy concept that you can do with household items. That's kind of one of my favorite things to do. Um, just a, a little clear pl plastic container with water in it. You get cold water, hot water, and the turbulent motions of the, of the water as it's mixing um, give you uh, turbulence in the atmosphere and give you these uh, different refractive properties, and that's what makes the starlight twinkle. That's what makes the planet seem to shimmer and move around in our virtual star parties. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, now I'd like to move on and talk about our main topic for the day with our guests. Uh, we are talking about the Galileo Scope project. Um, the website for that is galileoscope.org. Um, I'll go ahead and put that in the comment field in just a bit. Uh, I'd like to say for everyone watching, if you want to comment, there are several ways you can do that. Uh, if you're watching on the YouTube page, you can say hello and uh, I see a couple of hello comments. Uh, you can comment on the YouTube page. We're, we're monitoring that. 
Uh, if you comment on the event page, I'll be looking for that as well. Um, and if you're watching anywhere else and want to use Twitter, use the hashtag learning space, and I will see those comments. So uh, we'll be taking your questions throughout the show for, for Rob and Doug, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So why don't you guys tell me, uh, first of all, what is Galileoscope, and uh, how, how do you each work within the project? Well, let me, uh, I guess, start out with a little bit of the history of it. So 2009 was the International Year of Astronomy, and most people are familiar with that, you know, big worldwide event. And a uh, very, very spectacular thing, and for the International Year, there were a series of projects that were proposed that would be major worldwide efforts to promote astronomy, and there were 11 of them. Um, and one of them, which was originally, I understand, Rick Feinberg's suggestion at a meeting many years ago was, gee, everybody should have an opportunity to have a telescope and look through a telescope for the international year. Great, wonderful idea. Um, and so um, and nobody really knew how to make that happen at the time. So uh, I ended up having a conversation, actually, with Steve Pompey, who works with Rob, and with Rick at a AAS meeting. And um, uh, they were describing, you know, this small telescope they'd like to make and high quality. And it, it turns out that I helped. Uh, I'm an astrophysicist, but I help run companies and, and do business development. And I had just worked with a company that, that set up uh, overseas manufacturing. And I said, well, I mean, I, I know how to do the engineering and get this product to happen. So we, we started putting the project together. And so we, we acquired a sample of pretty much every inexpensive telescope out there, and they were all terrible. So we said, well, <laughs> we should make our own. I still have um, some in my office. You have a yeah. lot. <laughs> Oh, I, I filled my lab uh, with just cases and cases of bad telescopes. Wow. Um, and so uh, we, we said, okay, we, we should do this ourselves. So what do we want? We want it to be inexpensive because we're trying to get to everywhere in the world, not just rich, you know, wealthy places. It's got to be optically good. It's got to be mechanically good. Um, and we have to make them in huge numbers quickly. So uh, we work with a manufacturing company that I helped set up called Merit Models, and we did the engineering, and we've, we developed this telescope. Um, so this is at the end of 2008, and we're starting to get going. And um, unfortunately, that's also when the economy kind of dropped out on everybody. So the wonderful sources of money that we were all promised all dried up. Mm. So um, to give you the short version of this, uh, Rick and I personally funded the project. We put in the money to produce the tooling, uh, and to get production going, um, and we started making Galileo scopes, and uh, we've uh, distributed them. As of today, over 200,000 have been distributed to 106 countries. Wow, wow. Over 7,000 <laughs> were donated during the International Year of Astronomy, and they were distributed uh, through Kevin Govender in the Office of Astronomy mm -hmm. Development in South Africa uh, to places that couldn't afford to buy them themselves. We are... Uh, still making them, we are still selling them. There are about a dozen dealers that we sell through, or you can buy directly from us if you buy by the case. And believe it or not, if you buy them by the case, they're only $25 a piece. Okay. Which is ridiculously... It's super cheap, yeah. <laughs> I always tell people they can have it on their block together and get some. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Or, or, you know, grandma can buy a case, you know, one for each grandchild. It works out very, very well. Seriously. <laughs> works out very, very well. So then in parallel with this um, was a tremendous amount of educational development that occurred, and the materials from that have all pretty much been put through the Galileo Scope website. So no matter who's developed it, it's out there. This is what, what Rob and Steve have been heavily involved in, and they've done some wonderful outreach and education uh, projects and teacher projects all over the place, and, and Rob will, will tell you about that. But um, their materials, the Teaching with Telescopes program, the Galileo Scope mm -hmm. Uh, the Galileo teacher training program, uh, a whole bunch of these things have been developed. Uh, one of the fun things you can do is, is do a Google Images search and just put in Galileo scope and you'll be amazed. There are pictures from all over the world, little kids, older people. Uh, there are people who've modified them and used them as auto guider telescopes on very big telescopes. They're oh, wow. using them for auto guiders. Uh, there are people who put webcams on. There's a lot of great webcam images. And, you know, Rob, you've put a, posted a bunch of great images that you've taken with Galileo scope. I have scopes. some images from it. Yeah. In fact, I, so, well, so, with the before the final scope was even done, I was taking pictures of Saturn's rings with our prototypes, with those old SLA models. Yeah. Um, I got some pictures of Saturn's rings with that. Yeah, so it's so very cool. They're almost so, 
So okay. it's really it's been really cool to see all that happen. So we've also launched um, a sister program called Telescopes for Teachers, which is another donation program, mm -hmm. which is actually run through Astrosphere New Media, where people can donate, and uh, we'll send Galileo scopes to whatever school or teacher they designate. So we're we're still trying to get as many of these into the hands of. Uh, youngsters and educators as we can. But Rob can tell you a whole lot more about the education programs that have been put together and the work that he's done, which has been just terrific. So Rob, why don't you tell him about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I, I should first say our, tele, our, tele, our website, teachingwithtelescopes.org, is sort of where we uh, try and congregate all our stuff together. So that's a link you can put in there, Nicole. Okay, okay. And uh, I was doing work with optics education before the, um, before the Galileo scope came along with a program called Hands On Optics. Optics. We developed some op educational activities with lenses and focal lengths and image formation, that sort of thing. Which we then we were using those old Project Star telescopes. I don't know if you ever used those or not. You might you might be young enough. You uh, uh skipped over those, Nicole. <laughs> there were these cardboard telescopes. They used a singlet uh, eyepiece and a singlet objective. Had a very narrow field of view, and they they they, they were okay for showing what telescopes worked like, but you could not yeah. use them for astronomy because the so much chromatic aberration, such a small field of view, no way to mount them, mm -hmm. and that's what Doug said. One of the scopes that we wanted to improve upon. So, um, but so we sort of took that and adapted those activities to use the Galileo scope. Actually, I have a scope here, Doug. I, should, uh, I forgot you. Yeah. I wish to have one handy to a uh, yeah, show I, off. Yeah, I have one on the cabinet over there. Okay. I can go grab mine too. We have dueling Galileo scopes. Yeah, <laughs> I have one at home. We've got several here in the STEM center. <laughs> So yeah. uh, we, we've developed a lot of activities, um, how we can use the op Galileo scope to teach optics and use the lenses from the Galileo scope to illustrate vocal length and that sort of thing. Some of our, we've done workshops at American Astronomical Society meetings and Astronomical Society, the Pacific meetings and things like that over the years. But one of our uh, really uh, things we're really proud of is our Galileo scope star party program in Arizona. And this is where we go to a school district. We've done Yuma, Safford, Globe, Payson, and one more city, I've slipped in my mind right off the bat, bat, bat here, but uh, we've done these in several cities. Oh, Flagstaff, that's it, Flagstaff. <laughs> can't forget that. <laughs> yeah, I can't forget Flagstaff, where we look, not, especially as of the first one we did. But uh, oh, okay. we, have a, we have a teacher workshop where the teachers go through and they, we give them a kit which has all the lenses and stuff. They need to do experiments with their class, and we teach them about optics and how telescopes work, how to put together Galileo scopes. It's an all-day workshop pretty much for them. Then they go back with the kit of materials to their class, and they teach their class how telescopes work, and they put together. We also the teachers also get a set of Galileo scopes for their class. Okay. So and tripods. Uh oh. So they get Galileo's tripods plus a teaching kit to use with their class, and then about six to eight weeks after the initial workshop, after they've hopefully done all these activities with their students and built Galileo scopes, we go back, we visit the classrooms, and we have a school district wide star party, which can attract you know five to six hundred people at times. So we have this huge star party with all the fifth graders in the district. We're sort of targeting the fifth graders right now. Oh, that's perfect. So, so it's been a, been a really wonderful program, and we're getting ready for uh, – we've done it in Yuma for a couple of years, and uh, we're getting ready for another one in Yuma this spring in Globe and Payson right now. Cool. Uh, we did Safford last fall, so in Safford and Flagstaff last fall. So it's really really an exciting program, and we're looking to expand that to other cities around the state as we uh, find people to – Help us fund the Galileo scopes to get for the schools and got fund the Galileo scopes tripods and teaching kits. And I should also mention uh, one of our partners in this program, Science Foundation Arizona, who has been very generous at, uh, of helping buy the Galileo scopes and donors to buy the kits, and they bought Galileo scopes and tripods for all these teachers. So, like I said, that's been you know, several thousand Galileo scopes around the state now. They're in the hands of fifth grade students because of very Science cool. Foundation Arizona. Very cool. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, when I originally got my Galileo scope, is it a cat? <laughs> yeah, that's a cat. <laughs> there. Um, yeah, when I got my Galileo scope, I opened it up and it's all in pieces. It's, it's a kit that you put together yourself. And so mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me a little bit about the, the, the thinking behind putting it out as a kit? Because, you know, me, I have an instrumentation background. I think that's brilliant. But uh, can, you, can you tell me a little bit why, why it came out as a kit that people can put together? Well, remember, the Galileo scope was aimed to accomplish a variety of things. One was to make sure we could have an inexpensive but high quality telescope. But the other thing is that it should be useful for more than just that. Mm -hmm. And part of that was, was educating people about telescopes and about optics, as Rob was just describing. So making it a kit um, accomplished several things. One, um, it's smaller and easier to ship. 
which is not a small concern when you're distributing these around the world. Right. But also that it was designed, including the stands and the way the parts went together, so that you could actually assemble it and during the process of assembly actually learn what goes into a telescope and how those things work. Uh, we also designed it so that you could take it apart and put it together many times. Many yeah. kids are things you snap together, and then once you take it apart, you'll never get it back together again. So there's a lot of features. It, there was a tremendous design effort that went in there so that it could be assembled and taken apart and assembled and taken apart. Um, so, and, and it's worked. We, we know many teachers who've done that, who've used it you know, many, many times, so we know that that aspect of it works. So that was an important part of, uh, mm -hmm. of the process as well. And that's also something that's important for our uh, at Gal Arizona Galileo Scope Star Party program because once the teachers have the scopes the first year, they reuse them the second and third years and they can take them apart so the students can see how they work and that sort of thing the second and third year as well. Okay. I, must be, I must be bad instrumentationist because I haven't taken mine back apart since <laughs> I first put it together. But I, you know, I, just bring, I bring it along to, to the star parties um, that I used to help out with in Virginia. Um, so uh, we have a question from Mr. Midden on Twitter. Uh, actually, I think there's a way I can post this uh, question. Whoops. There we go. Um, is there a way to connect a camera to a Galileo scope uh, using simple materials, maybe a film canister? Well, it probably depends on what kind of camera they're trying to connect. Uh, there are two ways cameras are attached to telescopes. One is called afocal, where you, you, you keep the eyepiece in and you use your camera with its lens focused at infinity and you put those together. And then you just basically need any way to hold the camera in place. You can even have the camera on a separate tripod so long as it's okay. pointing through the eyepiece, that'll work. If you're trying to actually physically attach it um, without an eyepiece and have the, the, the telescope project right into the camera, then um, it, it takes a little more engineering and it depends what kind of camera you have. Okay. Um, there are parts that are made, uh, the, the back end of the Galileo scope takes regular one and a quarter inch accessories. The same, the same is going to any telescope that you would acquire from any manufacturer. So anything that's made to connect a camera to a telescope will work on the Galileo scope. And if you just Google, I, I just went to YouTube because I knew I saw a video there before. You just Google connect camera to Galileo scope, you'll find a link. Yeah, seriously. That's you'll find a link where someone made the uh, little film canister um, oh. uh, connector that he was talking about in there. I think it's the, the, it's the first non it's the first non sponsored link. Galileo telescope, a webcam in the moon, it's titled. Can I you, believe that actually it? shows you exactly how to make what he was referring to. Can you copy yes. and paste that link either into the comments or the, or the chat for me and I can share that I out. can sure give it a shot here. Let's okay. see, I'm like copying <laughs> it. No, I just gotta, I've got, this is my first time on this end of a Google Plus Hangout. I've gotcha. been a spectator before, but <laughs> let's see. So we'll see if this actually uh, is where I'm supposed to type it here. You can do it in the chat and then I can share it out from there. Okay, that did, um, meanwhile, that did, I found uh, this picture from back in the, I guess, the early development stages of Galileo Scope. This is an image of the moon that was taken by, uh, through Galileo. I, I didn't actually read, read further to see what type of camera they were using, but this is, I, I guess this is just a camera held up yeah. to the eyepiece? Most likely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's an example of the quality of, of image you can get. It's really quite remarkable. Right, right. So, that is cool. Um, okay, so you're working on that link for me. Uh, there it oh, should oh, come to you. Great, thank you. I got it. Okay, so I will share that out. Um, so yeah, so there you go. You can actually use a film canister, <laughs> and there's a now, video to do so. As Doug was saying, I've actually just taken a Galileo scope on a tripod, and I just take my little, you know, cheap $80, hu well, maybe even $60 now, point-and-shoot Hewlett-Packard digital camera from uh, Best Buy or Walmart or wherever, I actually just put that on a second tripod, line it up behind the scope, and clicked away, and that's how I got my first pictures of Saturn with its rings. Very cool. You know, just make sure to turn off the flash. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Flash won't well, work. Common mistake. Yes, common mistake. Yes. <laughs> and, if you, and if you go to my YouTube channel, maybe I can put that in there. I have several videos I did of the moon through the Galileo scope as well, Saturn. Just you no, know, not tracking. Just letting it drift across the field of view with uh, yeah. my digital camera. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe good. we should get you to uh, if you could hook up a webcam, get you to 
do the virtual star party through a Galileo schedule. Actually, I would love to do that, uh, Nicole. Uh, that, ah! that, that, so now that I'm getting into this Google Hangout thing, maybe I can do it. Okay, cool. I will get you in touch with our, our, our Star Party Hangout producer, because I think that would be fantastic to showcase what the Galileo scope could do uh, in real time like that. That would be cool. Yep. Um, so, uh, actually, if I want to talk back to the teacher training a little bit. You have teachingwithtelescopes.org. Are there ways that uh, you've done a lot in, in your home state of Arizona? Are there ways that teachers elsewhere can get materials or find workshops um, and find help for implementing Galileo scopes in the classroom or, say, museum educators or after-school clubs for using it? Uh, we have done, uh, we do have people around the country who have done workshops with Galileo scopes, in particular people like the Cincinnati Observatory and Adler both have people who have done work Galileo scope workshops. So um, I know ASP, Edna uh, DeVore at SETI has done uh, some Galileo scope workshops as well. Ben Burris at Chabot Science Center. So okay. um, I don't have a complete list, but if you want to, I could definitely work on that. That'd be something you'd be useful to people because I know there have been a variety of people around the country who are qualified to do it. Now, okay. for getting Galileo scopes, like Doug said, the telescopesforteachers.org is a, a great resource there. Okay. So there you go. Telescopes for Teachers. Um, I'm, I'm trying to post these links on the comments for the event page. Uh, so if you can head on over there, um, I will include them in the in the links uh, in the show notes for the links once the YouTube is finished because <laughs> I can't com put that in the comments, but I will be including those in the show description uh, as soon as we're um, finished. Yeah. And of course, we're we're always happy to try. We're always happy to try and arrange things too if we can, if it, especially if it fits our schedule. If there's a an ASP meeting nearby or a double AS meeting nearby, we happen to be at, you know, and you want to uh, glom on to us and have us stay a day to do a workshop. Uh, Look for the meetings you're in, and we'll see if we can make something happen. Very cool. I also want to let everybody know that we're actually going to start uh, offering workshops. Uh, Steve Pompey has been working with us to try to put a program together uh, where, uh, you know, if a group wants to get, uh, you know, 20 or 30 teachers together, uh, we'll be able to supply them actually with training, something we're just starting to put together now. So that'll be announced in the next uh, few weeks, hopefully, that'll be up on the site. And then people can not just buy Galileo scopes, but then request, we'd like a workshop. Here's how many people, here's when. And by the way, if they if they purchase a workshop, they can get their Galileo scopes at a discount. So that's what we're planning on offering the world. Cool. So this started as a year of astronomy project. So 2009 was the year of astronomy, and you guys are still going strong. So that, that is really uh, Well, we're going strong um, both because we believe in the project and we want it to continue going. Yeah. Uh, and also because uh, Rick Feinberg and I are still trying to sell enough telescopes that we can recoup uh, the rather huge investment. We each put uh, a house of money in it, literally. Oh, my gosh. Uh, oh, my tremendous gosh. amount of money into the project. Um, and, the, you know, the, the good news is the telescopes still sell. We're still sending them out. Mm -hmm. um, most of them, believe it or not, are not going to U.S. clients. They're going to international clients. Mm -hmm. um, and they go in sometimes pretty big batches. We just sent um, uh, 1,000 to the Yucatan in Mexico. In fact, I was wow. down there to, to, to launch their new education program. We've sent several thousand to Brazil. We sent quite a few thousand to Norway. We just sent a big order to Pakistan. Um, Germany just bought a bunch. Um, I think there's one from Venezuela. So, so uh, they're really going all over. We we just like to see more promotion so more people can get them. You know, we're volunteers. We don't make any money on this. In fact, we're losing money. Uh, so we don't have an advertising budget. We can't go buy half-page ads in Sky and Telescope and Discover and Scientific American. It's it's word of mouth that gets people interested, and so. Uh, everybody who's gotten them loves them, so hopefully more people will want them and yeah. we can keep getting them out. We 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 just did another production run, so we've got about ten thousand in inventory, um, and so anybody orders, they can get them right away. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah. I'd like to mention one of my favorite things, Doug. Have you ever seen the um, the Cloudy Nights forum? There's a thread yes, called yes. Pimp, "Pimp My Galileo Scope." And this is a fun thread where people have posted all the modifications they've done to the Galileo scope over the years. So if you go to Cloudy Nights and just search for Pimp My Galileo scope, I think one of my favorites is someone that built a focuser out of Lego, low gears yes. in Lego, so they could actually turn the turn the knob, and then this focuser would slide in and out as you turn the knob to make right, it a yeah. focuser. So there's all yeah, kinds they of built a Lego rack and pinion to go on it. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I know um, one year I was trying to find a picture of it, but I couldn't. Um, Pamela Gay, uh, who couldn't join us, she, she's sick today, 
Um, but she, I think, painted one of hers bronze to go with a steampunk astronomer costume. Oh, cool. There you <laughs> go. I like that. Yeah, I like that. That's yeah. good. That's very good. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Cool. Um, so are there other ways that people can support the Galileo Scope Project? So spreading word of mouth. Um, spreading word, word of mouth and, and donating to the Telescopes for Teachers program. Uh, okay. they, they can, you know, it, if you've got kids in school or you know people with kids in school, you know, teachers can't afford materials for their classes, especially yes. in sciences. Yes. Uh, but here you can make a donation. Uh, it's tax deductible and uh, we'll send an individual telescope for fifty dollars or a case of telescopes for two hundred dollars uh, to whoever you designate so if you'd like a case of Galileo scopes to go to the science teacher at your kids school tell us what school that is and we'll send it. Cool. I would also say that with that Doug if you work for a company that does a matching gift company see if they'll match your donation. Uh, my That's father true. Does that. My father when he donates charitable he, even though he's, he's retired his company will still match his charitable contributions so when he donates a uh, hundred dollars somewhere this company donates hundred dollars to the same organization. So, to work for a matching gift company, check that out too. Exactly, that's a great idea. Very Excellent good. suggestion. So, those are, t are 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 two of the best ways uh, to do it. But the other is, uh, you know, buy them. Uh, they really are great Christmas and graduation gifts. It's the kind of thing you can give somebody that's actually a really useful astronomy tool, and yeah. it's not that expensive. So. Um, anything we can do to get them in the hands of, of people is, is helpful. We want to improve science education and we want people looking up. The universe I, I is a beautiful I, place. Yeah. I, I feel like I was just a, uh, in, I feel like I was just an NPR host asking for pledges there with the matching <laughs> gifts and stuff. There you go. <laughs> I, I do want to say one thing about the scope though. The one thing that, uh, one of the optical features about it that I like, Doug, is the very wide field of view. Yes. And I actually think that if you get out to a dark side, I've been out to like national parks with these guys like Yosemite and stuff and Bryce Canyon and looked at the Andromeda Galaxy and I think you get a nicer view of the Andromeda Galaxy through this than through an 8 inch telescope. Strictly yep. because you have a much larger field of view and you actually see much more of the galaxy. So Absolutely. I, I'm actually very impressed with how this forms if you get into a really dark site. So it's not big so if you go to National Park, take it with you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the lights just went out. I, I noticed this. I saw you doing the <laughs> motion sensor dance. Yeah, I'd have to do that when I'm here after five. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, that, that picture I showed of the moon, that was, I mean, a very wide field of view. You've got the whole moon in there. And, right. and one of the big things with, I, I remember in, in 2009, it was the anniversary for Galileo's astronomical observations. And so you can see... You can go on a night-by-night -night basis and map the movements of Jupiter's moons, the, the four bright moons, and you can see them all in one field of view, which, again, if, if any of our, our virtual star party regulars are watching, you know it's hard to get that with the, the larger telescopes. You have to pan around right. to see all the moons. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. I, the, the, uh, I see a thing that says screen share up here. Does that actually work? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I have Click my picture. Let's see, let's, see if, let's see if this actually works. I have a picture of There we go. Let's see if this actually works, what I want to share there. Let me see. Yep. Yeah, this, oh, is pic this is a picture of Saturn I took with the Galileo scope. How cool is that? Yeah, this, is, this was taken in uh, March of 2009 with one of those SLA models, one of our last prototypes before we started production. And you can see the rings were almost edge on at this point. Yeah. This was, as I described earlier, I just nice. mounted a second, ca I mounted a camera on a second tripod behind the Galileo scope, pointed into the eyepiece, turned off the flash, and clicked. And this was a really dirt cheap point and shoot camera I used. Wow. You know, but 2008 vintage point and shoot camera, so, and that's not bad for a point and shoot camera just held up to the eyepiece. Yeah, that's fantastic. So I want to do it again without Saturn's rings are opening up this year and try and get a better one with the rings a little more open and see what the change is. But that was right before the ring plane crossing back in 2009. Right. So. That's really cool. That's really okay. cool. Okay. Now, how do I turn off screen share? Nope, I think you're. There good. I am. Okay, I'm back now. <laughs> Uh, we have another question. I'm going to post this one up um, from Icarus Factor on Twitter. Uh, and see if I can poke that. So it says, do you know of a do-it-yourself clustering method of lens-based telescopes to create a larger, cheap, a cheaper large telescope? And, and I don't know if you're referring to something like um, the way we, we put radio telescopes together to make an interferometer, which is, is kind of a different method. Um, do either of you have something to say on that? Or if they're doing a segmented mirror telescope, kind of like Keck, but a segmented lens telescope. I'm yeah, sure. I, I, in theory one can do it, but it's really, really complicated. I wouldn't okay. recommend that as a, as a, <laughs> as a 
brilliant way to, to, to build a larger telescope. Um, no, an optical uh, could, by, the way, when you, by, by the way, Rob, you could put two together and make a binocular telescope, and that would actually work very well. Yes. That would work. Yes. Um, in fact, but, uh, in fact the, I think it's the, uh, they make a binocular mount for the personal solar telescope, the Coronado PS. Yeah, you could use, you could use that. You yep. Just buy one of those and put the Galileo scopes on that mount, because that'd mount them about the right distance for your eyes and uh, use them as binoculars. There and you go. Yeah. About 60 or 70 bucks, they have a little mount that, it's designed for personal solar telescopes from Coronado, but yeah. the Galileo scope uses core to 20 nuts, and so does the Coronado, so it should work it just fine. Right. I've yep. used the Galileo scope with my Gorillapod, so it's just, you know, that little three-legged yep. bendy thing, you know, attach mm -hmm. it to the back of a metal chair, and you have a telescope set up, so yeah, you can you attach any, any tripod to it, which is really cool. Well, one of my favorite accessories for the Galileo scope is to, well, you guys both know me, I'm fairly tall. <laughs> and I have a parallelogram mount I got from my binoculars before I had a Galileo scope, and it's just beautiful. So yeah. I can look at, I can stand under the scope looking straight at the zenith without bending over. So if you have a, a parallelogram mount for a pair of binoculars, throw the Galileo scope on it. It's a wonderful way to observe. I highly recommend is, it. Is that the one where That's you can cool change the height of it? And it's yes, and it stays the point at the same spot in the sky. Okay. So it's yeah. great for my 20 by 80 binoculars, but it also works just fine for my Galileo scope. I find those are painful to put together by myself, but they're really because they're really heavy. But once you have it set up, yeah. it's fantastic. I used to do that um, when I was a TA and a grad student in labs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I love mine. It's not hard to put together at all. But I got. Well, you're I got you're bigger and stronger than I am. Yeah, true. So. true. <laughs> I'm like what a foot shorter. <laughs> Yeah, those. those uh, I didn't realize that was the name parallelogram mount. Um, I just said I call it the one that goes up and down and points in the same direction, which is a lot longer. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, do you guys have any other uh, last? Oh, oh. Have you had any um, really interesting stories from people using their Galileo scopes that have stuck out in your mind? Well, there are a couple of of them. One is uh, uh, shortly after we put them on the market uh, back in '09. Um, Al Nagler, and he runs Nagler Teleview Optics. So they make these really fancy telescopes and these incredibly fancy eyepieces. Uh, fancy eyepieces, like they're close to $1,000 a piece. Really fancy eyepieces. Oh, yeah. And he took one of them and he slipped it in the back of a Galileo scope and looked through it. And he said something to the effect of, gee, that's awfully good. So here was a uh, $20 telescope with a $1,000 eyepiece in the back of it. And he oh thought gosh. that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> There are groups of people. There's there's a, a guy in Racine who takes Galileo scopes and he goes to Tanzania and does programs for school kids out there, and he's modified them in various ways to you know he's put other finders on them and different eyepieces and things. That's, so that's, that's Rich cool Gelderman, and I'm I'm going to send you the link to tell uh, the telescopes to Tanzania program here in just a sec. Cool. Right. So uh, in fact that yeah that just got uh, there was just an article on that the other day. I think you guys sent it to me, or Steve might have sent it to me. There's a lot of really cool stuff uh, that, that, that's been done with them. A lot of cool stuff that's been done with them. So what size aperture? I have a question. I should have asked this right up front from Greg Smith. It's, also, um, it's a two-inch two inch refractor, 50-millimeter, 500-millimeter uh, focal length, magnifications of 25 and 50, and a field of view of about a degree and a half and about uh, two-thirds of a degree or so uh, in the two configurations. Yeah, yeah, I remember one of them had a really tiny field of view. Well, that that's, the, that's another setup. That's a setup that lets you that's the, set up this Galileo scope the way Galileo's right. telescope work. Right. And you can see just how incredibly abysmal what he had was. So <laughs> Yes, I've I done that for, for demonstration purposes. With the project yeah. to, um, for educational purposes, but it definitely creates a configuration that you'll look through once, appreciate how bad Galileo had it, and then never use it again. It's like because this it's tiny so little pinhole, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what you the full used. moon at one time. The field of view is less than the size of the full moon, yeah. Oh. which is what Galileo had to deal with. Yep, amazing, amazing uh, effort that he did. Yeah, um, but yes, it's a it, it's a two inch telescope. Well, well, Rob can hold his up, so I don't go off camera to go grab mine. But if, if, if you hold it up, there's the full size of the telescope, two inch diameter. Um, whole thing weighs, you know, less than a pound. Oh, yeah. I, I ha used to have one in the back of my trunk. I just keep it in my car. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I haven't done that. Now, I should also point out, I travel a lot, as you know, Nicole, as you mm -hmm. do, too. And uh, I, I, one of my rules on traveling is never check a bag. If you take this piece off, 
It will take the dew cap off, the front, the dew shield off. It will then fit in your 20-inch carry-on luggage. Oh. Just barely. So it's just barely short enough to carry on a plane like that. Just and take it's, this it's off. It's plastic, and... so it's not going to, you know, yeah. annoy the yeah, X-ray scanner. Nobody gets upset if you bring it along, right? Yeah. Okay. And I've, I've, TSA does not hassle you for bringing a Galileo scope through. I can attest to that because I've done it many times. Good Same to here. know. Good to yeah. know. <laughs> That is so cool. All right, is there anything else you guys want to say um, in, uh, in closing? I'll, I'll ask if there are any last-minute questions from the audience. Actually, um, I will do one thing. Yeah. Don't look at the sun with it. Thank do you. Not even, do not even attempt solar projection uh, because the eyepiece will melt. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that I have the eyepiece is, has plastic lenses, and I one time intentionally pointed at the sun on a tripod, did not look through it, and sure enough, the eyepiece melted. Wow. So, even yeah, solar projection will melt your eyepiece. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Don't think about it. Don't use it that way. Yeah. Do not use for look at the sun. Not even solar projection. Yeah. I'm a trained professional. Don't try this at home. You right. do have a big sticker on it that says "Do not look yeah. at the sun." Yeah. Do not so, look at the yes. sun. Exactly. Yep. There, there's a there's a "Do not look at the sun" sun sticker. Yes. It comes with the scope. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. I I <laughs> forgot that caveat. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, again, for everybody, that's uh, I'll put you know more of the links together at the end. But uh, telescopesforteachers.org, uh, galileoscope.org, teachingwithtelescopes.org. These are all the places you can go to find telescopes. Um, one last question coming in: uh, Is there a UK distributor? I know you said you have a lot going out around the world. We don't currently have um, a distributor in the UK explicitly, but several of our US distributors will ship there. Okay, uh, I think it's listed on Amazon. Amazon. It's listed uh, a couple of other places. Yeah, if you go to the Galileo Scope website, it tells you which distributors will ship to Europe. Okay. So if you're anywhere in Europe, you, you, you can select one there. We'd love to have a distributor in, in you know, the UK or, or, or um, Europe. So if uh, somebody knows of someone over there who'd like to stock them, we'd be happy to supply them. Okay. Yeah, you've got Amazon listed, um, Mini Science, Rainbow Symphony, a couple of different places that, that, that sell them. So that's great. Right. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This is You're really very welcome. Cool. This is really cool. Welcome. And I'm glad welcome. to hear more about the uh, the history and the background of the Galileo scope. And now that's uh, encouraging me to go out and use mine more often because usually I'm Please in the do. office. Please do. <laughs> in front of the computer. Uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. Um, also, uh, two weeks ago we did a, a uh, NASA calendar giveaway contest. Um, it kind We got cut off halfway through the Hangout, uh, but some of you still watched the ending and uh, read the comments and responded with the secret phrase, so thank you. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in the process of contacting all the contest winners, and you'll be getting uh, a NASA calendar. So we got the two 2013 NASA calendars. So we're going to get those sent out before it gets too late in 2013. Um, and I think that's it. Join us next week uh, for Learning Space. Uh, we have the next Hangout in our channel is the Planetary Society tomorrow at, uh, I'm going to double check the time so I don't tell you all the wrong time, uh, 2 p.m. Central, that's 12 noon Pacific. Uh, Emily Lakdawal usually hosts that show with the Planetary Society. Friday, join us at uh, same time, uh, 12 Pacific, for the weekly Space Hangout. We'll be going over space news with some of your favorite space journalists. Um, and I think that is it. Uh, thank you again, Douglas and Robert. Oh, you're welcome. Wee. You're very welcome. <laughs> All right. So you, Bye, you guys everyone. can hang on a sec, and we're going to end the show. So thanks, everyone, okay. for watching. Okay. Thank you.